in this video we're going to take a little bit of a further look at some of the features and functionality inside the new SharePoint 2016 document list. This is a continuation of the other two videos. If you haven't seen them, uh, part one and part two are on YouTube. Please take a look and it will show you some of the other features, maybe a little bit higher level for the document library. So today we're going to have a look at some user uh, basic end user functionality. So the starting point um, is obviously that we've got this new ribbon bar. Um, what's interesting is obviously there are certain options available here and what's worth noting is when you select a document you get a set of different options. So there's two ways of looking at this. Firstly there's the list in its entirety and the second option is each item so as an example the share option here would be sharing the entire list however if I wanted to share a specific document I would then select this option and and share the document so I think this is a trend as we go through this video that there are there are two components that we're continuously looking at the entire list and each individual document within that list and it's worth noting that there are some updates to some of these options here um, get a link as an example is a completely new feature um, in 2016 and well worthwhile um, having a look at it, I'll be putting another video on about this because I think it warrants it and how to use it um, certainly some nice new features and obviously the ability to be able to share here so if you wanted to delete a document as I said you'd need to select it and then delete it you wouldn't be able to do that simply just by looking at the list quite clearly you'd need to select that option and then press the delete button uh, there are some newer options along here. Move is a newer option. If we select this here, what we get um, is the ability to either add to an existing folder or create a new folder. So if I create a new folder, let's just call it new simply here, and we select that. We would then select this folder and say we're going to move this document and move that document into here. Notice you get an update here that tells you what's going on. So if we go into this folder we'll now find that that document is now in that folder. Other options include the ability to be able to copy. So whereas previously we moved the entire document in this scenario we would be copying the document. So this progress report for June 2016 we could select the new folder and say actually we want to copy that in. Now when we select this folder you'll see that, that that document has been copied yet the original still sits on the top of this library. There are some other options also. Um, for instance rename so if you wanted to rename this document you would be able to put this in here and let's say actually I don't want to call it June uh, actually this was April's report and save that notice that that gets a save and an update there there are also version control and I will do another video um, and I think version control warrants it because it's quite a deep subject but if we select the ellipsis here, we get some new drop down options of which there is version control. And here, obviously, we get this option here for version control. Don't forget, I've selected this document, so all of this is related to that one document at this moment in time. So if I select that and I select version history, what we get now is the update of what has actually been going on. And if I mouse over these, you notice you get the carrot here. I can drop that down and we have some options to view or restore and in this one here we can delete 
view or restore because this is a previous version. So you, you're getting those version options out of the box and that's how to navigate to them. You can also set an alert against the document type. Again, if we select this here, we get the alert option. If I select this, now what I'm doing is setting an alert against this specific document. And there are a variety of options here that I can select. Now again, I will put another video up in more detail about how to set alerts, manage alerts, etc. In, in the future. Um, there used to be an option to be able to set an alert to the entire document library. However, currently if I select this, uh, this isn't currently working. Um, so I'll need to come back to this one and hopefully Microsoft will update this. Um, but, uh, but I'm sure you used to be able to set the full alert against the whole library. I need to look at slightly more detail into this, but certainly you can set alert against individual items. And to be honest, I don't know. Can we set an alert against an entire folder? Looks very much like you can. So we can set that alert there against that against that folder. And I'm sure looking at this, potentially there's the option to replace the name here of the actual full list possibly uh, to set the alert. But as I said, there'll be another video with regards to f setting um, alerts both at a, a granular level on a document level and, and on, on a list level. So we can check out documents. If I select the ellipsis here, um, I am able to check out the document here. Notice when I do, again, we get this update here to say that it's been checked out. We also get this little green icon if I select off of the document. This was, uh, again, we had this little green icon previously in 2013. And then if I want to check that document back in, um, I can I can simply uh, either discard the checkout, which would mean dispose of it, or check it back in. If I check that back again, and I say check in test, and I save that again, constantly being updated here of actually what's what's been what's been going on in this library. Now if I come back here, we go to the version history. And we're going to see that that was checked back in and the ability to be able to edit it if we want or view it. So there are some properties also. And if we look, if we click this, it will open us up here into a very familiar panel for managing properties. There's also, if I go back to the library, the option if we select this and select details, we get the information panel come up here, which gives us a more complete view. And there are our properties with the ability to be able to edit them here. And here, activity is just loading at the moment. There's quite a lot of this change. Hopefully it will update before I finish this video and we can take a look at that. And there's some further information here. Now, obviously, in properties, properties can be expanded. Properties related to the content type and the data types that you've stored against that content type. Um, and the, I will complete a further video on that information so that we can we can dig deeper into content types. But effectively, uh, the the properties represent this data here and some other data that currently is not visible in this view. We also can go down and have a look at um, workflows. So that would look at workflows that are set against this particular document. If you've got any workflows running, it would let you know what the output was there. Again, if we click on this, go to more, there's some compliance information. So if you've got retention policies, compliance policies in place and the ability to generate a report based on that. You can still upload multiple documents here. Uh, you have the ability to load 
I think it was 99 documents the last time I tested it all in one go simply drag drop straight from your desktop up into here and it will load it uh, pretty quick uh, certainly one of the best multi-document loading interfaces that uh, I've sampled in some time there is also a, a, a nice ability to be able to, to move these columns about and I, I, this is a nice um, refreshing change and an update certainly in 2016 um, so if you wanted to condense those those columns down so you could get more information in or you wanted to, 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 to dig a bit deeper on you're able to do that straight away in this interface and I, I think that's a nice welcome update for for users so that about sums up most of the changes the only change that I have also haven't been able to find is the follow option you you don't seem to be able to follow a document uh, you can follow the library by the looks of things that to me actually looks like the site not the library if you if you check this I think you'll be following the site not the library itself uh, but you don't seem uh, there doesn't seem to be any options no matter what I've ticked or clicked on there doesn't seem to be any options to actually follow a document whether that's to come or not I don't know um, and whether there'll be any further guidance from Microsoft on that on that subject I don't know obviously as this moves forward and changes I'll continue to post new videos as updates come out um, I'm getting the latest and most recent preview releases so please watch uh, and follow my channel for updates hopefully this has helped you thank you very much for watching